I just I just wanted to ask you about your thoughts on Paul Heyman being inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, WWE Hall of Fame uh, this this year, and uh, whether or not uh, you had any uh, interactions with him over over the years. I I, I don't think I I honestly don't think I ever met him. I don't think we ever met. Um, yeah, because even in the heat wave thing, I I he came out, he confronted a few guys. Messiah was one of them. Chaos was one of them. And I was at the other end of the building in the other brawl, you know. So, but uh, and also aside, look, there were so many guys at the heat wave thing that ended up working, like you said, for XPW, like you said before too, with Rob and Paul doing something. It, 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 there's money to be made. Same thing. When ECW folded, it was all, you know, come and make your money in XPW. It really exposed a little bit that it was not a work, uh, you know, the animosity. But it, kind of people thought it was a little bit because the guys came. No, wrestling is just you, you work, you know. Um, so, but no, uh, aside from that, I don't, I don't, I never met. I don't think I ever met him. Um if I did, it was like somewhere in passing, but I don't think I did. Hey, look, um, I, I really am a fan of his old stuff, Polly Dangerously with the phone. Like, I do. I love all that stuff, man. And uh, so just that alone. And then and then you have to give it up for him for what he did uh, in the creation of ECW. You can't take that anything away, whether you're a fan of that type of wrestling or not. And just to let you know, most people in XPW were products of the eighties really. And we were all um, in this extreme league. We really were all WWF old school, regular wrestling guys. We weren't these extreme guys, but that was the product that we were a part of at the time. Um, <clears throat> so I, 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 I saying that um, whether you're a fan of the extreme style or not, he definitely deserves to be there for what he did um, a, a, in an independent sense of, with ECW rise, it rising up the way it did. Uh, and then just his work back in the eighties, you know, like, so, and of course being in Philly, perfect, perfect setting right there. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, to definitely devote some singular time to, the free fall event at the the Olympic between that scaffold match between New Jack and uh, Vic Grimes, which I think there's an argument to be made is even even more so than fully off the cage. I, I think is the most extreme bump ever in professional wrestling, and a lot of fans that maybe not as familiar with XPW's catalog look to that and think of XPW. Can you please talk about? your understanding of how that went down and when you saw that, that occur. Yeah. Um, uh, first off out of body experience. I remember um, I'll, I'll get to the lead up, but when, when it happened, when it was like happening and we were announcing it live, we didn't do all the shows live, but some of the shows we would, we do the play by play. Uh, it would be set up for us to do live. I remember walking into the arena and, and I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain this Jack, but like I, uh, something intuitively, there was this inner knowledge of what this was. I, I know it sounds weird, but, it, but it's like, I felt like I w almost like an out of body experience where I came, I came to that place from the future because I knew, wow, I get to go back in time to this big moment in wrestling history. I, I don't know how, how to explain. I know it sounds a little off the wall, but um, I knew that this was a huge moment, not just another extreme wild XPW night of action, which there were a lot of. Um, but that this was what, like, this is a, 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 a big time moment in pro wrestling history. Like I was coming in and out of that, in and out of that, and just being there doing it. And then back into this, it was like an out of body experience watching, looking up at the scaffold. Leading up to the event, oh, okay, yeah, I remember that ECW thing they did. Oh, we're going to reenact that kind of, oh, 40 feet? 
That, that how, how high is 40 feet? Pro, it is high. Oh, oh yeah, they've never done that before. Oh, okay. And um, I remember going to the arena, seeing the scaffold, seeing Vic. See, that's another thing too. You know, you have your matches that it's a, it's a scary stunt. But then when you got the two guys that really kind of have beef with each other, and you see that in the back, whether they're working it or not, um, but it didn't matter because it's like, well, shit, Jack didn't want to be around Vic. Vic's over here kind of pacing, hoping everything's going to be okay. So it was it was almost a, a show in itself in the back. Like if there was a documentary crew there oh my gosh it would this this iconic moment would have even been more iconic kind of like the montreal screw job when you yeah. saw in the back how there was still so much tension they only had a documentary crew in the back for that event to see like oh these guys really are not talking to each other and they're mm -hmm. hating on each other especially jack you know because he was still pissed off that their stunt in ecw went bad and blamed vic for it so and Vic was scared shitless. Vic, great guy, Vic Grimes, by the way. One of the sweetest guys in the business, right? Um, so we we all know this, and now we're going out there. And um, I just remember when he fell, that that out-of-body experience feeling like it was whoosh, it was so strong. And I just felt like I came back through a portal of time to like part of me came back to recreate and relive this in crazy impactful one of the craziest moments in pro wrestling history like i just knew it that's where we were at i knew that that's what this was at the time i don't know how to explain it i knew it that this was a that one of the craziest wildest moments in pro wrestling history i'm like wow this is it i'm here this is where it's happening and we're here right now and um so so when he came down and i did the scream and and I just at that point I just put the headphones down and I'm like okay we said enough we don't need to say anymore you know, and we just kind of ran where the broadcast booth was on the loge section we kind of ran down by the curtain against the uh, fence for the where the floor seats start, <clears throat> um, and we were just watching well, along with some of the fans right there, we were just watching and hoping to God he was okay. And everyone's feeling, everyone's face was like, what the hell did we just witness? Even the fans, like, it, is, is some people were like, is this a little too far? Wow, this was awesome. You knew you were a part of history when you, if you were there that night. You knew it. And I don't think I was the only one that felt that. Um, no, and the announcement about please clear the arena, <clears throat> that, that added to the, the whole realism of the situation for sure. And it was because they, they wanted, they didn't know, we didn't know how severe his fall was. We didn't, we knew he was alive still, thank God. But we didn't know if like he was going to die. You know, we didn't know if he like broke his neck and, and he, he's going to be paraplegic. We didn't, we had no, we didn't know any of that. And we didn't have any concern for uh, the rest of the boys, the fans, we just wanted to get everybody out of the way, out of there. We didn't want to riot on our hand. We didn't want anyone to, uh, again, get in the way of like the, the paramedics and whatever needed to be done. Um, so I will tell you that was, that was an incredible moment in history. And, and again, I knew somehow, I didn't know how I knew, but I knew that this was, it's like if you take a time machine and you go back to uh, crazy moments in history and and you know that you're witnessing that. Well, that's what I felt like in that at that yeah. night. It, it's hard to explain, but I just knew that that was. And it has it, got to be the craziest, right? I, I think I don't I don't even think it's close. Yeah, I, I think I, it's number one. I don't think it'll let well. I shouldn't say that with people falling through uh, glass and onto light tubes and et cetera, et cetera. But still, I don't think that's ever going to be, uh, that's ever going to be topped. And not only that, but all these other high falls, I'm not taking anything in away from like, you know, your Hardys and your Shane McMahons, but those are so controlled and regulated. This was like, yeah, I guess the ring goes right here. Yeah. I guess the tables go right here. Yeah. And, 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 and again, new jack unstable being the guy 
and and the whole again if you had a film crew i never really thought about this before this interview but if you had a film crew in the back leading up it would be even more of of a crazy yeah. moment in pro wrestling history if yeah. if you would have had a film crew in the back as crazy as that moment maybe like you said number one it would be 10 times crazier had we had a documentary film crew in the back looking at the guys looking at all of us uh vic jack uh, it would be even it, it would add to it even more i never thought about that until just now yeah not to mention the fact that uh grimes was what 350 360 pounds and not many high flyers he's just the size of three uh wrestlers most of the wrestlers today so that just adds to it as well did you know in the back that jack was uh packing um a stun gun nope. and, and, and did you have the, an opportunity to see him afterwards when he was well in interviews he says uh mission accomplished see you xpw right uh that's kind of what it was like i uh you owe me because you you know i can't remember the extent of his injury when grimes grimes and ecw he got the the uh from the height that they were at he got fright enough to where he just let go a little too late and the man dude he, yeah and he his hip did come down on jack's head on the concrete jack's and lucky he caused some brain da brain fluid and, and ocular damage in the whole nine yards yeah because which, he chickened out yeah yeah it, yeah then that was how jack looked at it and so all that was real all that was 100 percent real um and and jack's animosity toward him that was real um um but no, I didn't get a chance to talk to Jack. Jack Wood had his own circle and it was very small and he did his own thing. And a lot of times when his job was done, he got his money and left. If you, you know, so that was just another night where he did that. And uh, no, I never got to really talk to him. I really never talked to him too much until cold day in hell. That was the, the most I talked to him was at that show. But, um, and back, that was reunion show in 2008. But, um, um, no, I, I didn't, I don't think many people did talk to Jack other than his circle that night. Uh, Vic obviously went to the hospital. Um, but man, it was just, um, we knew that we knew after that happened and after they edited it. And then when I went into TV and they put it up there, like, oh my gosh, this is, I know, I don't know if this is right, but this is going to put us over the top. And it did, you know, everyone was talking about it and we, we, we ourselves couldn't believe what we just pulled off. Couldn't believe it. And we're so lucky. Like you said, so freaking lucky is Vic hit the ring the way he did hit the tables, the way he did bounce back in off of those top ropes, unbelievably mm -hmm. fortunate and lucky. I mean, he would have died if he, if yes. he didn't hit those ropes, he would have yes. died. He, yes. and you think about this too. The ring wasn't that far away from the freaking front row fans mm. from the first five rows of fans. Mm. I mean, I mean, looking back in retrospect, so much could have gone so wrong. Yeah. It's too bad. Jack has uh, unfortunately passed on because if something uh, would warrant a documentary treatment, it would be that whole, that whole deal leading up to it. And uh, the, the aftermath, I I'm assuming you saw the uh, dark side of the ring on XPW and just wanted to get uh, you were, you were in it uh, for, for a, a bit. Did they talk to you ever about doing an interview and what were your thoughts on the final product? Um, yes, I did see it. Uh, we actually did a uh, live, uh, uh, a recap show on extreme memories. So I had about 10, including myself, there were about 10 of us. Lou Cox, Joey Chaos, Mike Hartsfield, Billy Messiah, Patrick Hernandez, Homeless Jimmy, uh, Sylvia. Um, I, I Forgive me if I'm missing whoever else, but that was a lot of fun. We did that. We watched it, and we all did a little recap and kind of dissected what was true and what was not true in, in the documentary. So that's on Extreme Memories. You can archive that, youtube.com forward slash The Wrestling Chatter, and uh, go ahead and check that episode out, Dark Side of the Ring extreme memories recap show um so we i did watch it absolutely um um yeah they did they actually contacted me the producers contacted me um when they were filming out here in la uh they had a studio that they rented out and this was at the height of the pandemic 
Mm. So unfortunately, at that time, there were so many rules where they can only have a certain amount of people in that studio at a time. And I think they only had that studio for two days. So there were a handful that were in there that got interviewed on camera. And there were, I don't know who else, but there were myself and a bunch of others that got interviewed over the phone. So I, I had about an hour long conversation slash interview with one of the producers and they were just asking me a lot of questions and I didn't know if they were going to be able to call me in or not. They didn't know at all. They didn't know at all either, but they never did. And uh, I, I was fine with that. I was happy to give them my two cents over the phone and they were already watching my extreme memory show. And so they're, Oh yeah, we were watching your show now too. And uh, so yeah, I did like a phone interview for like 45 minutes to an hour. And so I guess there was a lot of, hearsay that I shared with them that ended up being the information that they put in to some of the document or some of the uh, uh, episode. Um, and yeah, I thought it was, as far as what you asked, if I, what I thought of it. Um, I mean, as far as everything that was accurate, it was very well done. Um, some of the stuff I, I mean, if you ask me, maybe I'll remember, but I just remember thinking some of the stuff was a little over exaggerated, but not much. That was the, that was the world that it was. It was a weird wild west, um, girls everywhere, porn going on. And yet we're doing this thing. We all love pro wrestling. Like how in the world did we get here? You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and, uh, so, so yeah, a lot of that was completely legit. Um, and I don't think, uh, any of us will ever i don't even think that world will ever be recreated again the way the way um even if you did have a porn guy that wanted to start a wrestling league i still don't think you're gonna see that again we were we we're so in so many ways we're at the end of that era the end of that wild west wave of the mm -hmm. business which coincides with craziness uh keeping kayfabe alive paying your dues uh, uh, all that we were kind of at the the book end of that era and and that was part of it you know the the wild west and mm -hmm. um and i don't think we're ever going to see that again you know and we didn't know we were at the end of that wave we, we you know until like, what four or five years later it's like wow the business really has changed you know yeah it got uh immeasurably more boring not <laughs> with, notwithstanding uh the reunion cold day in hell but were I, I I wanted to ask you for sure were were you uh, approached about the the recent um, XBW uh, restart and are you are you familiar with some of the the stuff that's out there that's uh, kind of um, raising some some eyebrows so two part question please yeah um, I was a part of it I I I was there for the first year of existence i went to the first show out in new york um first time rob and i had reunited uh we did that show and then i was i'm involved with pretty much every show after that for about a year um all i could all i want to say about that is it, it was um uh, we uh i didn't i didn't like the way rob did business and something uh as far as a disagreement happened so unfortunately we kind of cut ties and um that's just where we stand right now. That's just the way it is. And uh, as far as where the league is now and where it was going, I don't know if it'll ever, like we said, just in the last segment there, I don't think we'll ever see that again as far as the backstage stuff goes. So I, I don't know if we're ever going to see that as far as how the product unfolded back in the day. I just don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there were some things that I was, it was fun to be a part of again. And some ways it was felt like a little bit, it felt big time again, you know, in some, in some avenues. And then there were things that were just like completely like uh, ridiculous, like, uh, you know, syringe in the testicles and all this stuff. And, and yeah, that's and what like, comes to mind off the bat. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, I'm like, okay, the shock value I remembered back in the day, but this is just done for the sake of doing it. It's not even anything that's impactful. It's just, um, you know, if we did stuff back in the day, there was more of a reason behind it for doing it. And um, 
I'm all I'm all for if it makes sense, do it. Uh, and if and if the performer has no problem, if he's willingly doing it, whatever it is, uh, it's consensual. Then I have no I've never have a problem with any of that. Um, but again, what um, what are we doing here? You know, and and um, that wasn't the reason. Uh, you know, I didn't leave because of that. But I I I maybe maybe it was a part of it subconsciously, but I don't know. But but no, it was just a business thing that we kind of had a falling out with and disagreed on. Um, so I, I, I'm not watching it now. I don't really, you can ask me what was really going on with it now, but um, um, it was exciting. I was happy for Rob that he brought it back and I thought it was very cool. And, and the, the original concept he had, I, I was kind of like, wow, you can't cancel what was canceled. Like from out the gate, it was like, okay, that's interesting. It, this is a good time to bring it back when, when it, when you're really not supposed to be bringing it back. I was, I was on board with that. And, uh, but I don't know if I was completely down with everything that was executed. Um, but some of the stuff I was, and, um, I mean, I, I hope, I hope it, it turns a corner and, and people start liking it and everybody is, you know, making their money and having fun doing it and, and having fun watching it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this can be recreated. I don't know if we can yeah. see 99 to 2003, even, even the 2008 and nine reunion shows. Um, I don't, I don't know. And not, not to say that we haven't seen it yet, that it's not possible, but I, but I, I don't know. I, I know as much as you and all the people watching. Yeah, it seems like a, a lifetime ago in, in many ways, and I'm not sure it's getting the traction that uh, one would expect with the name, but but we shall see. Uh, any any product that provides uh, work for uh, the boys and uh, others yeah. is a good thing. Where, right. where I sit. <laughs> wanted to switch gears and ask you about uh, your your other uh, venture uh, that uh, that really captured my imagination when it came out with uh, was a wrestling uh, society. X, can could could you just talk about uh, in how that came together in terms of concept and execution? Okay, so when uh, XPW folded, I I had an opportunity to move to to New York City and uh, did a did a Broadway show. Um, it, the timing couldn't have been better because I didn't have weekly television. And then when I came back to LA, finished college, I, I reconnected with Kevin Kleinrock. And I, we were doing indie shows. He did an SCCW reunion show back in 05, which Vince Russo and Ed Ferreira were a part of. Uh, Ferreira was a Slammers alumni, Slammers Wrestling Gym. Um, so, so okay, uh, somehow Kevin got hooked up with Houston Curtis, who was the CEO of a company called Big Vision Entertainment. And uh, if you watch the movie Molly's Game, one of the gamblers in the movie was based on Houston. He was a big time into the, the Phil Hellmuth, Annie Duke, all that, the, the major poker players. And uh, so Kevin was working for him. Uh, Houston was a fairly well-known producer in the, in the industry. He was going to have a meeting one day for MTV for, a, I can't remember if it was a poker show, but he was going and Kevin, as Houston was leaving the office, Kevin was already working for him. And he, and Kevin, oh, by the way, Houston, can you just mention this to these guys? I have an idea for a wrestling show that's like underground in the bunker, but we have like rock, uh, uh, rock music playing while we're hiding away from the public, and and it's a cool vibe. Well, he, long story short, Houston came back with the original meeting planned for his TV show. They didn't like. Oh, but Kevin, they liked your idea for wrestling. Uh, and uh, down in a bunker, right? So long story short, it, it the, the pilot ended up getting greenlit. We did the pilot. And it, not too long after that, they wanted to go ahead and uh, keep it going because the pilot was very successful. And mm -hmm. and it looked great. I mean, mm -hmm. it looked it looked amazing. And um, what a and roster. Looked, uh, so on the roster was stacked. Yeah. I mean, stacked even, but even the um, non-wrestling fan, like it just looked for it for the time, even now it holds up, I think, but it just looked amazing. Right. And different. Um, and I think the half hour, it was only on for a half hour, but I think that concept on paper was great for the non-wrestling fan. You can only take so much wrestling, right? 
that was a concept that made sense on paper at least. But uh, um, when we got greenlit to do the entire season, all right, this is it. And it was um, very professional, very well done. Um, the only gripe that we had was when MTV wanted to step in and they just did not know wrestling. I mean, they knew television. They knew television, but man, oh man, every idea that they had for pro wrestling did not make sense for the psychology, for what we're going to, you know, how this is going to translate to next week's action type thing. Um, that was the frustrating part of the whole deal because it's like we were in the the offices in Burbank, which was literally right across the street from where the Tonight Show um, recorded. And um, we would be in these meetings and, um, you know, I'd come in to do the voiceover to fix certain things and all that. Um, and the execs would be like, we would have so much potential. The show looks great. Oh my gosh, look where we're going. And they, they, they'd have to step in and tweak something. And that man, that one little screw that so all they're taking out is one screw, but then the, the whole thing falls apart from that one screw. And that, that was the only thing on that job that was i remember being frustrating everything else was great everybody was professional again getting to work with all these talent i mean really talented performers a lot of future stars um and and uh and amazing and the payday was great you know i was like this is uh this is awesome okay i'm not complaining on that that front at all and um and and uh Unfortunately, what happened, the big the big break uh, backbreaker for the for the show was halfway through the season, every the production, they, they just um, did a, a, a clean house sweep of MTV producers. Um, Wrestling Society X was brought on board because they wanted to get that male audience back for MTV that they lost when Jackass left. So this was the attempt with that. Well, halfway through the season, they revamped the whole uh production team new new production crew came in and they they did away with getting the male audience back they went back to the to the teen my mom's a teen uh pregnant you know uh shows and and um and, and the rest was history we all know what happened to mtv so the writing was on the wall about episode four three or four maybe five and um and that was also the time where the fireball, they, they couldn't show fire with Vampiro's eyes. And it's just everything was kind of shit. The writing's on the wall. They took something that already looked good and they made it look a little corny at times that, that was already produced to work um, and lead right into the second season. Um, but, but it never happened. And, uh, and uh, the, unfortunately, the writing on the wall with, with changing the network and from from let's get that male audience back that was that was the true nail in the coffin i think mm. mm -hmm. well but a great experience like um amazing working in television in that sense i mean i did it with xpw but but now this is a complete different level you know you have all different camera angles you have uh you know these cranes coming in these li the live shot of the arena and 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 the lighting and and it like really top notch professionally done, uh, and a great experience as far as just uh, working in television and again being able to uh, produce alongside of Houston and Kevin and and getting a little bit more hands on as far as a producer is concerned. Um, great great experience, very thankful. Yeah, and that's uh, that's definitely a shame because here we are, uh, you know, still talking about it uh, so many so many years later. So obviously it was, uh, you know, an innovative. Maybe the argument could have be, been made that it was a little before its time, but uh, I agree. Yeah, that, definitely memorable. You you know, Chris, you've been extremely generous with your time, but I wanted to ask you before we wrap up uh, your thoughts on. Um, what what we call pro wrestling uh today the not talking about independent wrestling or or uh anything else other than the big two wwe which seems to be uh folk you know they're doing better business than ever but they have you know 20 30 minute soliloquies in their uh their television product and then a and e is you know very heavy on uh you know high spots and the i keep calling it a and e but it's aew yeah. 
I don't even. <laughs> that. That's a Freudian slip, maybe. Right. But uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, you know going to the other sort of extreme, do you watch the the big two today? And if so, what what do you think? I, I haven't been watching. Um, I just caught up with other things in my life. Um, I, I last couple of years I've been a little a little more out of it. I just it was it was hard to. Um, I don't know. There's there's multiple reasons. You know, once you once you work in the business, it's really at times can be difficult to immerse yourself and be that fan again because you just you see everything. You know, you you understand what they're doing, and and then if you're critiquing it, it's it's even harder. Um, I, I, I don't watch right now. I, I kind of get back into it here and there. Usually this is, you know, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania is the time of year you get back into it. This is the first year where I kind of have it. Um, but but um, I've seen enough to where I know, look, I, I, I guess what frustrates me about it is I, I understand now and know exactly how limited they are in certain areas of what they can do I, I i know how limited they are and 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 to me though the uh it's hard to get back into it when i know that wild west because it didn't just only apply to xbw it applied to the entire business we just happened to be in a porn office when it when it was you know but but um uh, but it's 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 unfortunate that wrestling is is um hindered and and limited and suppressed and censored and 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 their um their creativity is is kind of condensed now as opposed to how it used to be and i when i see that it really um, makes it hard for me to like immerse myself into the product. Um, you know, wrestling was the last, I, one of the last forms of mainstream entertainment that was able to get away with politically incorrect things, for example. Like when movies and television, even music, right, to a degree, when, tho when those were you know, you see through time when they were, oh, okay, you, you were only allowed to do this. You weren't really allowed to say certain things, even in R-rated movies. Wrestling still had the green light to do it when TV and movies were starting to become uh, monitored and censored and limited, right? And, and, and the, the crazy outlandish things, controversial things it could say. Pro wrestling, and we I know this from experience with people knocking at critics and all this, uh, we would always come back with, and the industry would too, like, well, you guys do know that pro wrestling is, is a, is a work. It's, it, I don't like to say the word fake, but it's, it's a show. It's, it's a spectacle. It, it's, it's entertainment. And then the, they would come back with, oh, you know what? I don't think it's real. Do you think it's real? No, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I don't think it's real. Yeah. I, you, do you stupid if you think it's real? Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Wrestling. I see, I know it's fake. So go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. You know, so wrestling got this in a weird way. It got the, it, it got a longer green light to to be able to be free and do outlandish, which controversial now things. So when that fully went away for me, it, it, it um, I, I, I that's not everything that is what wrestling's about, but that's a big part of it that I miss. Um, but the performance, I mean, I mean, look, in Wrestling Society X. We had great performers. Um, it was hard to put all that psychology in a 30 minute show, but but um, but the performers were unbelievable. So I have an appreciation for that. And and I and what it, whether it was AEW or WWE today, presenting that absolutely phenomenal athleticism. Um the the uh the psychology and the um when someone's being limited in a pro wrestling world. Um, you then you can really see them acting now, you know, and and that is a uh, part that I I think hinders the business, hinders the creativity, and um, that's the only out. Uh, that's the biggest takeaway for me for how the where the business is at today. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Where can the fans keep up with? Two part question: Where can they find you on social media platforms? And please. Tell us, in addition to 
um, your your works on on YouTube. What what do you have? What do you have going on that uh, that the fans can uh, be aware of and support? Okay, so um, I'm may basic. I'm mainly on Facebook. My name K R, like you see right here on the screen, K R I S K L O S S. Hit me up on my instant messenger. Um, we're not we're, we're we're on hiatus now with the wrestling chatter, but check out those shows again. YouTube.com forward slash the wrestling chatter. Um, 